the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Members, I don't really know what episode this is. <laughs> it doesn't matter at this point. I don't think we announce the episodes anymore because we're just kind of yeah. at this point we're floating them out on um, Twitch, right? Yeah. Uh, Patreon, then Twitch, then YouTube. Yeah, that's right. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, you're currently watching it on YouTube. Oh, by the way, we want to brag a little bit here. Look what everybody at the table got today. Pick them up. Uh, uh, oh, God. <laughs> your shoulder. We all yeah. got uh, the limited editions of, no, sorry, the Grim Apparelist collection, the special editions, if you will, uh, including 500, or so, give or take, pounds of book. Uh, not pounds. <laughs> 500 backers on Kickstarter will get their copies very soon. They're actually in the mail as of today. Make everyone jealous. That's right. They'll never be printed again. Like, they'll never be made again. Yeah. We may do another edition of them later on. Like, uh, is that just because you don't want to sign them? That's pretty much <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. My hand hurts today. It you don't want to lift them anymore? Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of heavy lifting. So, um, Tim's not here tonight, but that's cool. Uh, I'm your game master, Daniel Fox. We're on Twitch. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere. Um, thanks for tuning in. So, if you've been watching Queen of Embers, you'll know that the group had recently come to Kael Tyrion in preparation for a fancy soiree to ensure that uh, Baroness Madeline Dupre would be able to get the signature on a series of documents from her barrister, Rosanna Mansfeld, and you all have been escorting her here, uh, leaving the city of Durendal in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a crucial moment when the salt petermen just seem to be on your tail and chasing you everywhere. Like, it got really bad. They tried to kill you in the streets. So you left, you came here, and in the past 12 hours in the party, a lot of things have happened. So let's maybe just go back through. Mike, do you have our cards? I have a lot of cards, yes. Yeah, let's go back through our party attendees and talk about. Well, we'll go through each card and talk about what happened during the. And all of us should probably interact in this. Like, let's go through <laughs> the people who are there. Okay. Uh, I mean, we have the the people we were watching. Uh, we kind of narrowed it down to three that were wearing blue. Um, so let's see. Dirge the younger uh, at the party. Uh, he's like head of security. I seem to recall that um, somebody had cozied up to him at some point in the evening. Uh, you're thinking of Sir D. Cooper. We have not gotten there yet. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I thought that uh, uh, Bannister had went and uh, given the keys back to Darcy Younger. Yeah, he was the head of security. There was another Ar 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 Armani Warhol. The keys. He uh, stole the keys from Dirge the Younger, and for whatever nefarious means, but ended up running into someone, I can't remember quite who it was, uh, dropping the keys, and uh, were, those keys were then returned to Dirge the Younger, who then chewed out uh, Armani Warhol. And. Uh, I've got a timeline if we want to go by that. It's sure. Nice to by person. Let's do that, yeah. That would be helpful. <laughs> Might be a little less confusing. Um, so, Banneker ended up going as a guard. Uh, Warren went as a guard and ended up getting kicked out of the party <laughs> for was, asking about... Y'all having the fuck parties? <laughs> That's what I was... Where, where for asking the, about the fuck party. Where, where do you do the finger banging? <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's what I, I literally thought. have it written down. Warren got kicked out for asking about fuck party. That is. <laughs> is this note. a key party to him? <laughs> <laughs> what's right? Uh, what's better is you find out later he wasn't completely wrong. Um, 
let's see. Armani had a blue scarf on. Dom uh, Domino was wearing blue and had a snake tattoo on her leg that we happened to see. Uh, Jonathan went to go stay with the boat, but ended up switching with Warren, who got drunk with all the sailors. That's right, because oh, yes. if you recall, uh, Jonathan Vander, in kind of a daring play, kind of suggested you shift the goalposts, like change the change the game, and to uh, instead, uh, well, I'll let you tell it, Jonathan. What was the what was the ploy? So, coming into a disadvantage, the idea would be that uh, we would abscond with uh, the Madeline and hopefully throw someone's well-laid plans into disarray to where the plot would be revealed. Yeah. Organizational efforts uh, could have gone a little better. <laughs> we, uh, the, uh, the timeliness of the act was uh, unideal. Was Let's say, <laughs> for the players who did not listen to that episode or listening to this episode, uh, Warren got drunk and lost track of time. <laughs> but uh, after asking about the fuck party, he had a day. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah. Warren was not, in fact, a uh, <laughs> was not, in fact, an, a perfectly adequate replacement for uh, <laughs> Jonathan's role to uh, pretend to steal the mad line. But he got the job done. Eventually, <laughs> the job was done on uh, on Southern time. <laughs> yes. Jonathan was in no hurry to. Uh, it was uh, yes, he was. Uh, there were there were naps and drinks involved. Yeah. Nonetheless, uh, he did in fact uh, finally come through. As to whether that mattered, that's uh, that's for others to to say as to what that. Things started to get chaotic there. Good. So then now uh, we found out the guards were all dressed in blue, and there was a new guard that had been recruited that Banneker found out about. Um, that was somebody, nepotism, somebody's relation of some sort. We didn't know at the time what, but. Um, Genity Cooper. Copper? Copper. Cooper? Copper. Copper. Genity was the other one that had blue on. So there was Armani, Dom uh, Domna, and Genity, the three that we were worried about. Um, and to be fair, so did uh, Terowin. <laughs> Terowin had fancy blue on. Yeah, he was. You know, Technically, but, I had blue on as well. That's right. So, it's all us. Yeah. Um, he was fancy. Uh, so Harper met up with Armani and was talking to him at the paintings in the hallway. Um, Terowin ended up staying with Domina. Uh, and that's when Jonathan came and joined us from the ship. Um, Elisa ended up going after Genity. Uh, we watched Domina give RH Block some kind of roots. Well, Who, who saw Terwin that? saw that. Terwin, that's yep. right. She's a lot lotus. Uh, Armani left to go supposedly talk to Dirge, um, at which time he stole Dirge's keys. Um, which I noticed. That's right, Harper yeah. noticed that, that's right. Uh, which Harper went and told Banneker. Um, and then Armani and R.H. Block got onto an argument on the dance floor because Banneker went and told. Or, or what? No. That was later. Armani, Armani and H.R. Block got on an argument because H.R. Block was drunk. R.H. Block, sorry. Copyright, my bad. Um, <laughs> Vetter dedicated a song to Rosalia. What did he say? I think he sung Heart Shaped Box. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> or he recited Heart Shaped Box. Yes. <laughs> it was quite the prose. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Yes. So, uh. <laughs> Only she could find a better man. Then. <laughs> Gave me Pearl Jam. Um, so then Dirge went and took RH Block to the side and was sitting with him since he was a drunken mess. And, well, drunken and whatever else. Uh, Banneker ended up giving the keys back to Dirge at that point. Um, and then a messenger showed up and gave Rosalia a message, which we don't know what it was. Who did? I'm sorry? A messenger came and gave Rosalia the That's right. Barrister a message. That's right. And I believe <laughs> um, that uh, this is the same messenger that Jonathan used to go down to the ship. Yes. Yeah. 
had a good day for his uh, his pocket jokes. Yeah. And Rosalia ended up going to a drawing room for some reason. She needed to draw off documents. Wow. Well, so she says. Uh, Armani, Dirge, and Genity started getting in an argument outside because of the key incident. Um, and then Elisa pulled Genity back to her side again. Um, then uh, Dominus went up to Baron Clayton and said she needed to speak to him alone. Or offered to, at least. Um, at which point Jonathan started putting together that he thought Rosalia was guilty. Or started announcing that. Uh, and then they went downstairs to the fuck room. <laughs> well, to be fair, it was his <laughs> as man uh, cave. The, the as Lady room. Gabriella called it his man cave, where they discovered what Harper that he did indeed have wood cuttings of uh, the Baroness in very risque uh, fashions. What was she? What was she doing? Uh, mm-hmm. She was fucking the King Cassandra Malliser with a pistol, like a strap-on pistol. Ugh. Do you remember who the woodcutter was for that? It uh, was... Wasn't it Armani Waterhall? No. no. Mm-mm. Flint oh, Hefner. Oh, oh, yeah, Hefner. Flint Hefner. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was a whole bunch of talk about screwing the king repeatedly down in the basement. <laughs> um, uh, and then the new guard, uh, Banneker saw the new guard let a skinny man in through the front door that was suspicious. Um, at that point is when Warren finally got the message at the boat and sobered up for a moment. Maybe? No. Well, probably not sobered, but he at least. He said so And then Lady R.K. Uh, starts going after her husband because said ship is sailing. Uh, because Jonathan told Sophine, uh, uh, Josephine Booker, or, right? Yeah. yeah. And told her, you can't tell anyone, so, so she immediately told, told everyone. Someone, yes. uh, so there is an older man, sure. a dancer, and the new guard were sitting talking, found out that that was Delilah, and the guard was her sister, and the older man was Hefner, um, who was owed money. Uh, he said, and that at the fi- time of the fireworks, they would move forward with whatever their plan was. Um, let's see. At that point, Domina asked Terwin to step outside with her. It was the other way around. Uh, did Terwin ask? Yeah, he had, Terwin was like, "Hey, uh, you want to get out of here?" Huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Um, uh-huh. It was deep down because Terwin was extremely uncomfortable, but he thought he'd at least try and find a way to get out of it that somewhat benefited him. Hey. We'll see. Uh, and then Jonathan was going down to the study to discover what Rosalia was doing. Upstairs, rather. We'll let Jonathan oh, pick upstairs? up from here. Okay. What happened, Jonathan? Well, it's, uh... So I discovered, uh... What is the, uh, the commander's name? Lieutenant Felder. Lieutenant. Had been stabbed with injurious, potentially lethal intent somewhere in the drawing room and outside it was like in the hallway outside that's the right. drawing room correct that's right yeah and attempts to communicate with him were limited but I was able to get him to confirm that uh, my suspicions were correct as to the nature of his attack via the use of the Iggy actually where it landed he was able to squeeze my hand to indicate that uh, our uh, protectorate was uh, potentially, in fact, the uh, betrayer. And that's where we left off. So, Jonathan, you were, you were down up on hand and knee, and you could feel wet, hot, sticky blood beneath your, your knee as you're in this very narrow hallway that's illuminated by these burning candle candelabras along the sides of the walls. And Commander Tenenfelder, his eyes are filled with tears as he squeezes your hand twice as his eyes are locked upon the door the, to the drawing room. Right. It was 
around this time that I was uh, screaming for yes. help. That's right. Yes. Down below, even before you manage to step outside, Terran, you can hear the screaming of, of what's Jonathan say? Help for the love, for the God's love, help! We need assistance now. Help, help! Uh, I'll look at uh, Domin and say, "Come on," uh, or it, it'll be a question. Come on. She shakes her head. She's kind of she's she's. She stops. She says, I need to see the, the Lady Gabrielle and make certain she's okay. And you can see in the ballroom, everyone, everyone's kind of in a bit of a disarray. And the doors open outside into the front courtyard as you see a few people begin to slip out. Okay. Uh, I'll look around to see who else is nearby. Everyone at this point. You can see um, Harper. You can see uh, Banneker, who I'll be playing. You can see... <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, <laughs> uh, you can see, uh, fuck you, that's what that's right, it's, a, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good banister. Um, and you can, of course, uh, naturally, and of course you can see Elisa. Uh, I'll, I'll look at Elisa. Where, how far away from me is Elisa? Just across the ballroom floor. Uh, I'll point at Elisa and I'll point to Domina and, and uh, <laughs> like... Pew! <laughs> yeah, if I were to... Pew! Yeah. Oh, the door to the gardens are open. And then uh, I will turn around and I will go to where Jonathan is. Up the top of the lamp. Yep. Read the room fireworks. I see Terwin going up. I'm going to keep an eye on the uh, the Baron, or her cake. I'm going to yeah. try to find him and stick uh, to him. Also, okay. on my way there, are there any servants in between me and the the... The stairwell. There is one of the house, no, one of the house servants. Yes, who's kind of looking a bit of fright. Kind of, he's coming down. He's coming down the stairs very quickly, as the uh, as the clock strikes ten. Uh, are any of them holding Dorm. like a, Dorm. Um, like Dorm. a, one of those big plates that they have that have the like, sure. little handles on them? I'm gonna take one of the plates from it and okay. uh, just kind of like hold it by one of the handles real awkwardly. And um, like move forward with my cane. Okay. So like a very makeshift and terrible idea for a shield, but it is. Okay. <laughs> you come up the banister <laughs> where you can see the two sweeping stairs go either way, and of course at the top of the stairs is this huge mahogany uh, uh, grandfather clock with the face that seems to show the passing of the day and the night, and of course it's a cuckoo clock where it has these little like at the, every strike of the hour a little procession of people come out. At the tenth hour, you can see this little tinny music, and you can see what looks like this. Yes, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, you can see what looks like a hooded figure, kind of chasing after smaller people with a with a scythe, kind of moving down toward them. At this warning, the witching hour is getting closer and closer. Oh, that's so awesome! All right, but anyways, I'm going to continue to go towards Jonathan's voice. Come down the stairs, and Jonathan, you look, you look askance down the hallway, and you can see that uh, Terrawin is there immediately in his blue uh, fancy uniform with the cane and a large polished silver platter. And of course, you can see immediately. I'll shake my head at the uh, pot the platter, like. Commander Tannenfelder. Commander Tannenfelder, you only met uh, back in Durindal. Remember, he was leading the other. The other foray toward the north, toward a town called Stowe, to um, to hopefully draw away any would-be assassins is he from right? Rosalia. Is he moving at all? Like he's expired. Okay. As as Jonathan looks up towards you, and you both look back down toward him, his eyes are are wide open, and he's no longer drawing breath. He's dead. What is it? I mean. No, I obviously. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? You madman! Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Besides the zone. obvious. The alliance has been betrayed. Uh, uh, no, I'm with it. <laughs> it's her. I told you, it's her. Where is she? just confirmed her. I don't know. I look towards the drawing room door. The door I, is still slightly ajar. I will. I will rush in like a fool. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Boom! He kicks the door open. <laughs> and you look back and forth, and you can see this is clearly a drawing room where one would go to retire if you were a guest. You would pour a decanter of wine if you wish, and perhaps pull up to the mahogany desk, and you would be able to illuminate manuscripts if you will, or write, write whatever you need to do. 
and there's actually messenger pigeons in a nearby cage. This is meant for guests to come to and attend to. There's a water closet and such. And in the dying of the candlelight, you can see a slender woman's body lying face down on the desk. And there's blood all pooled beneath her boots. I stop at the doorway and I look around to see if there's any other doorways into this place. You look around, but you can immediately see that through this set of wooden double doors, there's a balcony outside. Okay, uh, I'm gonna not try and I'm gonna try and skirt the area um, so as I don't like contaminate a crime scene. I know that we don't use those words. Sure. But, but I'm gonna sure. try and avoid. You don't wanna, you don't track blood all over. Yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna look out the window. Okay. You come outside. <laughs> see that the fireworks are exploding high in the sky high in the sky overhead that are lit somewhere near uh, the arcade mansion beyond the gardens and although it is dark out and it's dark as it's there's a, not any clouds there's a lot of starlight no it's a moonlight to see by but in the explosion of the, of the colorful flame that kind of falling like burning cinders over all of Kale Tyrion in the gardens you can see a figure who has just crawled down a uh, lattice and vine side that leads up to the balcony and is now spreading long-legged across the gardens. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna yell, murderer! As I uh, like, just toss the uh, um, plate in the direction of mm -hmm. the person and I'm gonna start to uh, uh, I'm gonna yell, murder in the courtyard! As I will try and descend the, the lattice myself. And, you all hear and, this immediately. And pursue. Hmm. I'm assuming Did I that. Park here yet? But yeah, okay. he's he's looking out the door of his uh, of his uh, man cave and says, "Is everything fine up there? What's going on?" He says. I thought he came up. Oh, that's right, he came up. That's right. Dur Dirge kind of grabs him and says, Master Lord, Lord Arcade, downstairs, downstairs, back with you, back with you. Get downstairs, lock the doors, he says, as he's taking Lord Arcade back down into the man cave along with Lady Gabriella and the other guests as he's ushering them inside. And Sir Genity Copper is kind of helping usher them in the ballroom as you're kind of basically caught up in the rush of people passing back and forth, both you, Elisa, and you, Harper, as they're attending to their own. Okay. Um, I'll go and chase after the murderer. You want to go upstairs? No, I'm going to chase after the murderer. You said murderer in the guard? In the courtyard. In the courtyard. Okay. Or courtyard, okay. wherever you said. I'm going to run out front then. So. All right. You turn up on heel and begin running toward the guards. What about yourself, Elisa? Uh, Elisa is going to, under the pretext of checking on her friend, go make sure Domina is okay. She's actually been escorted downstairs into the man cave where now Sir Dirge the Younger is standing and the door opens slightly as Sir Genity's down there and he hands Dirge the Younger this really wicked looking spirit looks more ornamental than anything else. And Dirge the Younger, being 70 winters of age, he kind of stands there stalwart with the spear and says, kind of ushers you back upstairs. Ushers, uh, oh, ushers, even Did though you? Domino's in the room. Ushers you upstairs, yes. Yeah, and Domina disappears behind everybody else. All of the people who are at the party are now downstairs. Yeah, she's gonna attempt to reconnect with Domina. Okay. Um, Dirge holds his hand out. He points back upward. But uh, she is my friend. I need to make sure she's all right. The door sh slams shut, and you hear something sliding inside. We've got it from here. He says. Where's Genity's in that room as well? Yes. And she's gonna take off running upstairs to head to the courtyard. Okay. Actually, no, she's not a fighter. She's gonna head upstairs and head towards where she heard Terwin. Okay. You head upstairs. Okay, there's weapon impacts. It's weird. <laughs> Huh, interesting. Playing. Big Sirenscape. <laughs> Where is that coming from? That's strange. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll skip that. Um, so you know it's got a bar where you can just drop them. You come upstairs and you can see Jonathan <coughs> standing over Commander Tenefelder's body. And you can see that you can hear um, Terwin yelling as he begins to descend down the balcony. So she's going to walk forward to the room where he descended from Mm -hmm. and look around. Inside you can see this slender woman dressed in um, a long gray gown bound at the waist uh, with this somewhat fanciful belt. She's lying face first amid a number of papers, uh, and there's blood all beneath, pooled beneath her, beneath her boots. Do I recognize the dress? It's Rosalia. So go to the window then. You look outside and you can see Terwin descending down. Terwin, make a hard coordination test. Okay, uh, that is going to be 17%. And a 96 won't do it. In your rush to come down the side of the building to hopefully catch up toward whoever's running away from the room, you stumble and fall down. Um, five yards? <coughs> As you suffer eight damage. Oh no! And you've no armor on, my lord, I believe. Yeah. Uh, damage doesn't take armor. Right? That's right. It doesn't. Yeah, it, 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 if I, yeah, even if I had it on, it wouldn't matter. Um, but I'm fortunately still unharmed. Good. Whoa. You fall around, <coughs> falling and dropping your cane. Meanwhile, Harper bolts out into the garden. Jonathan, what are you doing? I'm going to very concentrate very like distinctly on catching my breath and calming myself so that I can... Observe the, uh, the the grisly scene and see if I can figure anything out. Okay. You step into the drawing room where you can see already that uh, Elisa is kind of looking toward the body, and clearly it is Rosalia Mansfield, without a doubt. No doubt at all. The whole room is kind of lined in bookshelves and a circle of chairs and a fireplace on the far wall wall lights the room. Unfortunately, it does look like it is, in fact, Rosalia, and she is dead, stabbed several times in the back. Like, several wounds. Vicious wounds. What were the commander's wounds? What what seems to be his, uh, where the blood is seeping from? You turn back and you move toward the commander, and you realize he had been stabbed uh, in the st- not in the stomach because he was wearing mail, but he was stabbed beneath the arm, in the armpit, with something long and slender. Are the wounds similar to the ones on Rosalia's Mansfield's body? Well, the ones upon Rosalia are far more vicious, as if they were intended to be well, to ensure that she died from they were just kind of vicious hacks along her back. They, her, her flesh is exposed. You can see the tears in the dress where the knife was literally stabbed and drawn out and stabbed and drawn out. Like, imagine like uh, like being caught not caught on wares, but, but if you'd imagine that perhaps Rosalia had turned about and the person could have acted a bit hastily. But clearly, as you can see, you can see some boots actually covered in blood uh, along the floor that lead back to Commander, Commander Tannenfeld, including somebody else's, uh, who was clearly barefoot, by the way. Uh, you can see where Commander Tannenfeld and this other person had a quick scuffle, but the only wound you see upon Tannenfeld is beneath the armor, like right beneath the, the really right in the, right in the uh, soft part beneath the uh, arm and armor. You and, of course, you and um, <clears throat> Elisa are kind of witnessing this and kind of putting these things together. So Elisa's going to try to look out across the garden, see if I can spot some of the person that Terrell was talking about and kind of lead him towards the direction they went. Well, you come out kind of following the foot, footprints, and they're bloody footprints. They these, these bare footprints actually from blood, they kind of lead back out to the balcony and into the top of the balcony where the person clearly was standing on top of it and jumped down. 
and <coughs> you see the figure running toward what looks like a solarium not far from here in an adjacent building it's connected to the manse. She's gonna call that out. They've headed towards the solarium. You kind of come out into the grass and you catch up with Terwin as you help pick him up off the ground and you kind of look up and you can see Elisa as she points out like toward the toward the solarium not far from here. It looks like a, like a low stone planetarium. Um, when he starts to attempt to pick me up, I'll oh, catch up, get it! <laughs> hey, I'll leave him. Yeah, I don't want any help. I want someone on it as fast as possible. I see a train and pick it up. That's right. Well, <laughs> that's strange. What would this be out here? Looks like you're going to try to keep that catch up with the chase scene. Sounds like fun. That's right. In order to close the distance to catch up to the person, you will need to do a short chase scene. Very, very short. So first we will start, uh, who's going to participate? We know that uh, Tara went well. Tara went and Harper. We know Harper. Harper, what's your brawn bonus? My brawn bonus is five. Okay. Tara went? Eight. Eight. Okay. All right. Yeah. And with that, they begin to pick up pace. And you begin to pick up pace as well, trying to close the distance. I will generate the uh, chase threshold here, which is number, 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 number. <laughs> I got it. And with that, the two of you begin to pick up. And I believe that uh, Terwin, uh, you'll be able to roll, you're going to be able to roll first uh, because you're starting this. Cool. Yeah. And that will bring us to make your movement check. So um, it's going to be 1d10 plus your movement. That's how we start out. Okay. Uh, I'll get a. Ooh, I started with a 10, so it'll be 16. Nice. Nice. Okay. Terwin picks himself off the ground and begins moving very quickly, grabbing the cane in both hands and kind of giving chase to this. Boo mysterious figure as quickly uh, as he can, trying to close the distance. Not far behind him, of course, is Harper. Harper, go ahead and roll your movement, if you would. Oh, mm. for sure. Eleven, all together. Eleven, okay. Harper's still some number of yards behind you. You see the figure okay. kind of dart behind a number of tall bushes or trees, poplar trees, that have been carefully manicured. <laughs> Explosions still out in the city. All right, Terwin, you're up next. Roll your movement. This is the second round. You only have three rounds. Go ahead and roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, 11. 11. You're gaining ground. You come around the same manicured trees where the figure is, still bathed in dark shadows. You can see this person is completely barefoot. We move next to Harper. All right, Harper rolls. Oof. 10 altogether. Three, okay. two. You see that they're getting very, very close to the solarium, and you hear once again above Elisa kind of shouts out, pointing. What does she shout? Oh, we're close to the solarium. Mm -hmm. Try to head them off. Oops. Not all I mean, I mean, they already know which way they're going. So. Well, I've got an alley on them. Okay. Tearwind roll. Uh, I will try and take that advice and uh, head towards the solarium. Then. Sure. Um, and another 11. Okay. Go ahead and roll, Harper. Uh, okay, that's 13. Oh, I rolled 
Terwin was so close. <laughs> Harper, you trailed behind a good a eight lot. yards. Yeah. yeah, you were way, way, way behind, and you were not able to catch up. All Nor these was Terwin as the door to the solarium opens and <laughs> slam shut. Being, being a solarium, it must have some windows. It yeah. does along the second floor. It's actually an open kind of glass enclosure within. You can see a shadow actually on the top of the glass reflecting as the person is running through the solarium to an adjacent building that's attached to it. All right, I'm going to try and open the door. Okay. The door opens, and of course, you can see within here there are a number of kind of wooden tables that hold a great number of aromatic plants. Some flowering, some not. You can hear the chirping of birds as they're amid the uh, amid the uh, top of the solarium where the windows are open to the night. Back toward uh, Rosali, back toward the drawing room where Elisa and Jonathan are. What are you doing? You know what I don't understand. Yeah. As the commander was expiring. I asked him to indicate if my suspicions were correct and that Rosalia Mans was involved in his death. And he said yes. And yet, there she lies. Well, maybe she initially was. Sometimes disagreements happen. Quite obviously, she was stabbed in the back there, which would lead me to believe that there's no one with her at the time. She didn't expect it. Correct. Um, what, what of his wounds? Like an assassin's thin blade, similar to like a parrying rapier underneath his armor. Well? I'm no weapons expert or ballistics trained, but that doesn't look like what happened to her. I kind of point towards her like heavily mangled, like knife filled body. Elisa's going to try to look through her purse and see if she can find a small dagger or any kind of weapon that she might have had on her. You kind of begin picking through any pockets she has, which are few indeed because dresses don't have pockets. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you don't find any weapon whatsoever. Anything tucked into the desk, anything? I mean, opening drawers and sifting through where the papers are and looking all around. In fact, you even look beneath the bed in case it dropped and skidded somewhere. There's nothing. She doesn't appear to have had a weapon. Not that we were checked. As she, Elisa pulls out her knuckle duster and slides it under her hand. They didn't really look that well. Well, barefoot though. Why did this person not have shoes? You wouldn't run through city streets without shoes. That leads me to believe that they must have been here. Taken them off? I'll look into the, uh, like, is it a, like a, uh, like a, a vine truss that the, he climbed down earlier? It yeah. is, yes. But you do notice something as you're walking toward it, Jonathan. You realize that the bloody footprints actually go several places in the room. They extend from here as well toward the fireplace. Do these footprints look like they belong to the same person? They do, yes. They're barefoot. You can see the footprints start all around where Rosalia's body is. They then move to the fireplace. They then move back toward the door that would open into the drawing room where you clearly, this person in the command antenna filter had it out, and then they move away toward the balcony and disappear out into the garden. I'll go and look at the, uh, look at the fireplace, check it for signs of use or disturbance. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It looks like there are papers burning in the fireplace. Oh shit. Is there a. Is there a. Uh, I guess my brain has failed me today. The thing you fire used poker? To, yeah. Is there a uh, fire poker? We can try to get those out. Nowhere nearby, no. Uh, is, it, is it 
possible to read the papers in time? Uh, Any of them? If you uh, pull them out of the fireplace quick enough. I'm not going to stick my hands in the fire. At <laughs> least it's about that she will. I am not doing She'll that. try to grab them. Okay. Elisa oh, rush, rushes up to gra- grab the papers. Uh, go ahead and make a... Maybe. Your first coordination test will be routine. I actually at least have coordination. No, I don't. Never mind. But I have... Okay, agility. You got this. Hi, 15. That puts me at 55%. <coughs> 56 won't do it. Ah, you pull the paper uh, out. I'm going to go for a point. Oh, okay. Oh. Papers are probably <coughs> one important. Greater than half. Uh, 38 will do it. Okay. <coughs> you snatched the first one out. There's another one that's burning there, too. Okay. You try grabbing that? Yep. It's a standard test, because it's more burnt. 45 is exactly on the nose. <laughs> nice. Okay, you grab the third paper, and then you find this small, this small, uh, ribbon of a piece of paper that is just lingering on the very edge of the ash, almost about to be incinerated. Alright. <coughs> Do I have to grab that one as well, or is that a freebie? <laughs> <laughs> that is not a freebie. It's a challenging Pull two, get the third one free. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, we're at a 35% chance. Oh, 78 ain't gonna do it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Nope. You managed to get it out, now that singeing your hand Ow. Uh, for five damage, oh, ignores exactly my damage ignores armor. Nice. Nice. Oh no, wait, ignores ah! armor. Yes, ignores armor. Just brawn bonus. Yeah, my brawn bonus right. is four. I think one. You go down. <laughs> I am lightly wounded. Okay. Wounded, did it. Let's suck it. She manages to get three papers out of the fire in time, but the others are softly kindling still as. Jonathan, you were kind of recreating the scene in your mind what unfolded here. <clears throat> Great. Just Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the door to the solarium opens up. Harper, you and Terwin are at the, the very front of it. Mm. Um, are there multiple ways to go in here? Looks like there's just one way through the uh, terrarium, and in fact, you see another door open at the far end of the solarium, far, far in through the. Are there any stairs upstairs? No. Okay. So there's really only one way to go. I'll, yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, pursue that way. Okay. Right. I'm looking. Uh, did I ever notice footprints? No, you've been rushing this direction. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, if I saw the door open, I'm gonna move towards that door. That's the only indication of the direction I have to go. That's the only okay. thing I'm doing. So you come through the solarium, and then you come into what looks like a room filled with a number of tall, mahogany uh, wardrobes and amid the wardrobes of this very very dimly lit room there are easily easily more than three dozen mannequins standing in a neat row in this very dimly lit room and each of the mannequins are dressed differently with different clothes. Some are mostly women's clothes. You hear some shuffling inside. You realize there's no light in here. Just a dim light coming from from the from the from the door that's open now. Uh Terrible will approach cautiously. Like, would I have my lantern on me? <laughs> of course you would. Okay. Get her to party. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll approach uh, uh, cautiously and then uh, cane drawn <laughs> as uh, I'm expecting to be ambushed, basically. Okay. Um, 
I'm looking for basically any way to add light to this room. Okay. You're looking around. You don't see any windows in here, and if there are, they're certainly shuttered. Right. You need to go deeper inside to let your eyes adjust to the darkness. And I will do so. It's very, very dark inside. As the four dozen or so mannequins wearing different outfits greet you, your eyes begin to shift in the darkness. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to whack each mannequin. Okay. You come to the first mannequin. You hit the first one with the wood, with the with the with your with your stick, and it it doesn't move. It's affixed to the ground. The head goes spinning. As the head goes spinning, you hear this this ricochet, like snap, crack, and then a strange sound further back in the corner. I'm gonna move towards the sound. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm gonna keep abreast to him and. Okay. Uh, um, keep the cane ready to, for something, someone hiding to get us. Okay. Well, you've only your hearing to aid you in here. Both of you need to make secret eavesdrop tests. Damn. Eavesdrop? Mm. Yes. Alright, I normally have 33. 36. Uh, I normally have a 41 and I rolled a 46. Either one of you want to keep those? I'll keep it. It's better than I expected. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it. <clears throat> You're kind of slowly walking through, and you hear the creaking of your boots on the mahogany floor as you move toward where the sound of the ricochet and crashing was. And as you get there, <laughs> There's this explosion outside from the uh, from the fireworks, and light kind of flashes in for just a moment across all the four dozen mannequins, and the shadows kind of grow short and long against the wall. And you can swear you can see one of the mannequins moving through them, and then suddenly the light is gone. You go to the corner, but you can't see anything. You're kind of poking around, and there's nothing there. You hear this creaking sound along the floor. There's nothing in the corner. Your eyes have adjusted the darkness. It's kind of faint and dim and gray, like as if there's just barely an amount of light kind of coming through that door out in the solarium from outside. I'm gonna uh, get near the. I'm gonna go back towards the doorway and I'm gonna say, try and see if you can open one of these windows. And uh, I'm gonna bar the doorway. Okay. You've been heading back toward the doorway, splitting yourselves up in this very large room amid all of the mannequins. But that actually brings us back to Elisa and Jonathan. You could have turned away from the slain body of Rosalia, and you have the papers now in hand. Reading. Well, I can. Well, without a doubt, they're all badly burned. Um, you don't quite get here in time to recover all the papers. But uh, the foremost one that you grabbed initially, you can have hand to Jonathan as you're looking at the second one, which is the small scrawled, the small note. In fact, you remember that uh, Rosalia met with the messenger. You, seen, you saw the corner of your eye when you were with Genity Copper earlier, Lisa. A messenger handed her a note, and this must be it. It doesn't, there's, the, unfortunately it's been burnt to a crisp, but you can see a signature up on it. And that signature says, Tippleton Murdoch. In your hand, Jonathan, the other burned paper, the words are kind of hard to make out because they've been smudged with ash, uh, and they're just so badly burned, but you can see a, 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 a pair of words repeated multiple times. Wolves, apparently. Uh, 
and upon the upon the paper it seems to repeat the words several times esoterica dorindal Unfortunately, uh, well, you know what? You are well learned, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The background of Alexi would mean anything. I think both. Oh, absolutely, it would. Will you show it to her, Jonathan? Yeah. I say she'll share the message. And we both have like pretty deep like roots and that's right. Academic Durandal. Even the even the, the, the these the name of this book seems very strange. It doesn't strike an immediate bell, but both of you may attempt a hard education test or a standard incantation test. Whoa. Education it is. Yep, same. Uh fifty three standard leads so the hard Jimmy Thirty You said it's a uh a hard education test? Yes. No. I have a 55% chance. Red first. 30. I got it. Nice. I did not. Well, let me draw you a card here. You're not familiar with its contents. However, you know the name. It is a a book of the histories of Durindal that has been banned by the Holy Father. So hand S. Tergator Durindal to uh, Jonathan. Uh, it's uh, witchcraft and the like, then. Sorcery and uh, things heresy. on speaking. It was heresy. 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 Oh, I know what that is. Here's Temple to The uh, the more hellfire members of uh, of society. All right, here this one belongs to you. Sort of seek this out as a uh, something of a cheap thrill. I'm not certain that they have any actual aim with it, but there are things in here that are, uh, let's say, impolite. You do know what division we work for, right? Well, so you can tell that division that there are things in here that would be considered it's extraordinarily probably, impolite. There's probably a copy somewhere on somebody's desk. But, strange. It simply says that. It's obviously not a book page. It doesn't appear. So I don't know. Does it look like it was torn from a book, or is it just a note referencing the book? It seems to be a note that was written from one person to another talking about the book. Mm. But you can't make out really anything more than the book's name mentioned several times in the note. This is the most curious. I'll kind of stomp over to... Uh, where Rosalia is, because there were papers resting where she fell. That's right. I want to see if those are the original paperwork that was supposed to be signed. Also, did I get anything from that third one? Or did it just burn you, ash after it burned my hand? You did find something. We'll get to that in just a moment. So, Jonathan, you do discover uh, that the paper that this is made of is not the same paper that is at the desk. Right. These are the, uh, the the fealty contracts on the desk, then. Uh, they would be were they here. Unfortunately, uh, their remnants, only the, one of the only papers that was still left was reclaimed, the third paper was reclaimed from the fire that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that, that Elisa found that was, that was burnt. Okay, so some of the paperwork from the desk is missing. She is just, basically has like, Insignificant paperwork around her, uh, around her corpse where she fell. That's right. Okay. But you do notice something as you're kind of rifling through the papers. You find another piece of paper that has actually been bloodied. It's 
it's it's the blood has soaked through the paper and is it has uh, unfortunately it has ruined the ink. But you see the name Emil Frosch upon it. How's that spelled? E M I L F R O S C H. I'll give you a card for it. Alright. Do I know who that is? You don't, but it does happen to say something, something, something. Village of Stow. S T O W. Send it to send it to Durindal. And then we turn back to the chamber mannequins. Terran comes to the door. And as he shuts it. Oh, I don't shut it. I'm sorry. I, I block it with myself. Ah, I see. It gets very dark in here. Mm -hmm. you're, search, you're searching around for windows and you can hear the creaky of something nearby you. You're searching in earnest for for windows, but you kind of bump up against this huge, tall, like figure-sized mirror. Hmm. There are no windows in here, at least on this side of the wall. Hmm. You can see a few rays of light come between from Terwin's shoulders and between his arms. <laughs> the shadows kind of move along the interior of the room. I try to, when that explosion happens, I'm going to blink real quick and take a picture with my mind. So <laughs> <that's what I'm laughs> Press A. Yeah. I'm going to screenshot that. Um, Print screen. Exactly. Now, um, now, I'll try to identify where the wind, where the light's coming in from, so that way I can potentially... Light was coming from behind Terowin, where he's blocking the door. So, yeah, but is it, it was coming from above as well? Like, are we still no. in the solarium or no? You're not in the solarium. Remember, okay. you're in a chamber that's attached to it. That is filled with four dozen mannequins with okay. all manner of different clothing on. As you look down toward the floor, you can see a discarded, bloodied cloak, but as quickly as you saw it, it's gone because the flash of the fireworks are gone. You hear this shuffling, like something's being pulled off something, like clothing is being pulled off the mannequin. Hmm. Yeah, so I I make the assumption that they're trying to change their disguise. They're trying to change into something else. So um, I'm gonna either I'm gonna you know using my sense of smell for blood. I'm gonna use smell uh, and I'm gonna since I can't really see anything, I'm gonna listen as well. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to because I can't really trust my eyes. So that's what I'm gonna go with sense of smell for blood, that coppery ting. Mm -hmm. And then also, just if I can hear them wrestling, try to put clothes on, I'm going to go that way. Okay. Make a secret awareness test. Okay. The air is a bit, is, is of course, tastes like phosphorus and, and fireworks. The air is actually choked a bit, too, with the smoke from fireworks coming from outside. Okay. So, uh, normally 43. I rolled a 75. Okay. Can I keep it? hear these strange sounds and of course the mannequins are kind of rather creepy in the dark and the creeping along the door along the floors gets a little closer to you Terwin like a little closer how how close do I I, I want to try and gauge that distance oh gosh it's going to be a hard eavesdrop test okay hard eavesdrop test that'll be 21 and a 38 won't do it. Okay. You're not really sure. You see when the mannequins shift and move. No more than just a yard in front of you. No, I'm not going to leave this doorway because that's probably what they're trying to do. Get me to leave the doorway so they can leave the room. Hmm. Um... You hear this clink and this slow 
clunk. The sound of a crossbow being locked and loaded. Hmm. I'm gonna take my boots off. Okay. And that way I'm barefoot as well, I'm trying to sneak around. Okay. Do I hear that? Oh yes. All right. On that case, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna step out of the doorway to the side of it. Inside or outside? This into the solarium or into the room with the mannequins? Uh, into the solarium, and I'm gonna uh, basically put myself in an Overwatch stance. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that as soon as something comes through the door, I'm gonna hit it. Okay. You come to the other side of the solarium. You remove your boots and drop them. Mm-hmm. And we turn back toward the drawing room. back to where Rosalia's body is laying over the desk where Elisa and Jonathan are pouring for the papers. Elisa. We are back to the two of you in the room. You can hear some sounds outside of the door at this point. As you see Banneker standing in the door trying to take in what's happened. Welcome. Hmm. He says. He's still dressed as a uh, household guard. Do you have any idea if everyone downstairs is secure or not? They're all inside, but uh, one of those guards who's wearing blue who was late is gone. They left with the old man, Hefner, yes. and Delilah. Well, they were planning something during the fireworks, but... Whatever we did, we spoiled it, but... I don't think we're expecting this. I think either anyone was. I didn't even know Town and Builder was here. I think that was the point. Well, I guess Rosalia did. And once again, she kept from us something that she knew. Again. Doesn't matter now. It does, because what else was kept from us? At this point, I have another name to look up. Jonathan, I assume you've found more information that leads to more questions, more things that we didn't know that she decided not to divulge. Maybe. Something about the, uh, a village called Stowe and something about sending something to Durendal, but I don't know what. And on this other note, they refer to this tone. My initial instinct says that this tone was somehow the actual bit of commerce that she intended to engage in. I don't know how much we've discussed the Madelines, and I know that you find me to be sort of uh, a flake and an oddity, but the power source that drives the mad line is not necessarily just steam or fire or gears or and it's certainly not horse. Perhaps I am, uh, this is pie in the sky thinking, but I can't help but think that this book and that ship are related. I don't necessarily doubt that. Not that I believe in the esoteric being some kind of engine for this particular thing, but suffice whatever that may. At this very moment, there's only so many people that we can look to, and whatever I may think of you personally as a person doesn't matter. What we need to think of is what happened here. We know that Terwin and Harper have now run across into the Solarium over there. I haven't seen them pop their heads back out. But they chased someone down there. That can't be good. Uh, With two dead bodies, I assume it couldn't. Yeah. These bodies aren't going anywhere. Also, I don't know that there's much more we can get from them. Banneker, Jonathan, if you wish, I think we should possibly go down and join our comrades. I don't know. 
maybe you stay here? I I would be loath to stay somewhere alone right now. Do you find it odd that uh, two people were brutally murdered on the upstairs of their estate and when I called for help, only people I know personally came? I don't. That is not what would happen in a house like this. I they had no reason to believe anything was happening other than perhaps a guest was injured or sick. Well, it's not the way they behaved. But to assume that we were the only ones that were given any kind of advance notice that someone might wish to harm the Baron would probably be well, short-sighted. Well, sure, but they would have at least sent one Hold uniform, on. a staff of some kind. They sent no one. Well, That strikes me. If you're a pacifist, it's possible you don't want to confront things. I mean, there's a difference between being a pacifist and no one said the word murder, mind you. All I said was that we needed help. You're right. It does raise suspicions, but... Significant suspicions. So you believe that the Baron had some say or some potential, what, coup against the barrister? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily jump to that, uh, to that far, but... Perhaps his house staff could have known uh, what was uh, what was befalling. One of his guards was obviously in on it, and his dancer that he invited, obviously, as well as some Hefner fellow. I don't know anything about Hefner, but it feels like a lot of things are uh, are in the air. Yeah. Back okay. at the parlor where the uh, mannequins are. You hear that faint clicking and locking sound. The chamber is dark. <clears throat> you hear a... <laughs> like something's being cut. Snapping sound and creaking of footfalls on wood. <laughs> Here's a slight clattering sound, as if perhaps two wooden dummies are rubbing against one another. <laughs> Explosions from behind you outside, beyond that door. The shadows and the mannequins play against the wall once again. Well, you can see this because he's outside. The shadows play against the wall, and you can see a figure leaning down, fashioning something on the ground. As quickly as you saw it, it's gone. Try to keep track of it in my mind's eye and <clears throat> slowly start direction. walking towards there. Okay. You've been slowly creeping. Roll an arduous stealth test. Sure, it's not secret? No. Alright. Well, 10% guys. Wish me luck. That's a 15. So close. Ooh. As you're moving forward, you hear this <laughs> sound kind of across the floor to the other side of the room, away from the mannequins. Mm -hmm. Like towards the door that... No, across right? the opposite wall where you once were. As you kind of come in there, the, the person moves to the other side of the wall. Okay. So they're running now? That's interesting. So yeah, I'm going to try to chase after them. Okay. As you turn about the chase, you trip over rope or something as you fall flat on your face, kind of caught unaware. And as that happens, the Hero 7, you were struck from surprise by something very, very sharp. Oh no. Suffer 12 damage, Oof. and you must make a challenging toughness test. Well, let's do the toughness test real quick. Challenging would be 32. That's an 88 critical failure. Oh no! Oof. That's not good. Uh, and then you said it was how much damage? 12. 12. 12. All right. So I go down. 
moderately wounded. Okay, roll one d six chaos die. Three. No injury. However, you feel your limbs grow heavy. Very heavy as you realize you have been poisoned. <clears throat> that nanigan was poisoned. Yeah. Uh did you critically fail? Yes, I did. Do I need to spend a fate point? So, here's what happens. Um, you're unable to use reactions and perilous stunts. Okay. For two minutes. Mm. And you can feel your nervous system being arrested as your heart is pounding, your blood is coursing very quickly, and whenever you critically fail a toughness test, it withstand toxins. You're slain once the toxin runs its course in two minutes. Basically forever. <laughs> we will put initiative on the board now. Okay. <clears throat> Everyone or just those two? Just these two for now. I got 12. I got a 12. I got I a 13. I have some perception bonus of... You beat me. So the assassin. I think Taryn go. Yeah. Taryn would you get 13? Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Taryn. You hear this sound and this scream from Harper. Harper, what are you saying at this point? Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I like it. That's right. Oh, God. Oh what will you do, Taryn? Uh, I'll say, get out of there. Can't leave this door. They're going to come out. Sleep past us. And I will enter a... <laughs> can't feel my legs. Well, you can't move? Feel all tingly. And, uh, so I will, uh, come into the room, and I will shut the door behind me. Okay. You come into the room and slam the door shut as it's pitch black in here. So that's two AP, maybe with your last one. Uh, I'm gonna yell out, if you don't give yourself up. You are going to regret it. I swear, we will find you. As uh, I'm going to use a litany of hatred. I love it. It's good. I think this will be uh, probably easy, given that you've cornered this person inside the room. Easy leadership. Okay. Or sorry, easy to make. My apologies. Okay, that'll be 71. And a 32 will succeed. Okay. You hear a slight shuffling beside you as the, uh, whoever is here, the presence of that person is looming over you. You can feel this heavy breathing coming to the person, almost a panicked breathing. As you can feel a hand, a very, very cold hand pressed against your neck, and you could swear you could hear the knife stabbing down at your line. Seventy percent chance. This is zero four. Yep. Yeah. Sixteen damage. I go down to grievously wounded. Roll three six chaos dice. It's a two five two. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you wouldn't mind, Elisa, would you give me? I need you. To do some check marks for us. Uh, put a hatch mark between one on Terwin, one on the assassin, and now one on Harper. Harper, what are you going to do? You're I, lying on the ground. Well, if I feel his hand, I'm going to grab it, and then I'm going to try to grab him and put him in a chokehold. Love it. It's great. Go ahead and make a routine athletics test. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to aim as I can, if I can, try to clamber up, and then yeah. hold on to him and put it in. You can yeah. Grab, kind of pull up on the arm toward the shoulder. Try to I got you down. now, you son of a bitch. 
motherfucker. Here we go. Uh, wait a second. You've been exposed to folk bait. You can't use perilous stunts or reactions. Oh. Well, you then. feel your let. You, you reach out. You feel your your fingers tingling as they kind of your arms drop once again. Uh, uh, I've been feeling a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> you're like oh, and you can uh, really feel. You feel like you're dying. Like you feel like the, the, your blood is slowing down. Right. You're getting cold. In that case, I'm gonna strike out as I can. Like I said, if I got his hand, then I got an idea of where he might be. Okay. Um, be a routine I, test. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll just do yeah. Just normal one hand. Just, uh, just uh, barehanded. Barehanded, knuckle busting fight. Okay. All right. It says routine. It's gonna be simple uh, melee. Uh, it's a 63. Wouldn't that be athletics? 92. No, it's simple melee. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I miss mean, anyway. And then I'm gonna try to roll away as I as a maneuver. Love it. Okay, yeah, use your last trip. You, <laughs> you quickly roll to the side. Put a hash mark to say Terwin. Terwin, what will you do? Uh. Terwin will, uh... You can hear the scuffle at this point. It is hard terrain, so you cannot charge or run. Or technically maneuver, but we'll give you that one for free. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it made sense from an narrative perspective. Yeah. Um, Terran will go towards the noise. Hustle up? Yeah. You're going to hustle twice, then. What's your movement? Uh, my movement is six. Okay, you can hustle over there once. Okay. Um, and then he's going to, uh... I mean, for the scuffling... Uh, he's going to try and strike out at it. There are two targets, but you're not sure, sure who is who because it's dark. Uh, uh, I'm I'm having it's okay. in my brain. Uh, Harper! Yeah. And I'll strike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead and roll the hit. If you miss, you must re-roll regardless. Right. Unless you have uh, a chance to strike Harper. So right. go ahead and roll. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Harper... Maneuvered away. Yeah. Let's see if actually, let's see if the person you came up on is Harper first off. Okay, sure. Roll D6 cast die. One through three, it's Harper. Four through six, it's the foe. Six? It's the foe. Okay. So you pass um, him once. Right, and I'm having a hard time thinking. It's okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try and initiate a takedown. Um, okay. And so I will uh, sweep out the, the legs for, with the cane. Like, use, stick the cane down and try and push. Uh, the person over the cane, the sound. I mean, I can't see it, but right. I'm imagining it all in my brain. Oh, absolutely. Make a challenging yeah. te- challenging coordination test. Okay. Challenging coordination will be 27. And 56 won't do it. Okay. So, uh, one of the, one, a bit, as you make this test, one of the mannequins falls to the <laughs> ground as you sweep the mannequin out from underneath of the, the floor. Okay. And then uh, I'll, I'll reel around with the cane and strike out towards the noise. Okay. Roll strike. It's going to be a standard test. Standard test will be uh, 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 fifty because I'm assuming this is an improvised weapon. Improvised hand weapon. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, fifty. And a ninety-one won't do it. Okay. Anything else? I almost want to use a fortune okay. point, but I think I'll keep it. Do it. Put a hatch mark beside the assassin. Uh, I'm not gonna do much fight. <laughs> yeah. I'll. Uh, so you got a fortune point. Oh, you want to? Yeah, I do. I talked to me. Uh, I'm going to try and swing again. Okay. So, re roll. Re roll, thank you. Yeah. And uh, 59 won't do it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now it's the assassin's turn. There is this uh, scuffling and this scampering uh, as whatever's in front of you moves away, but you can't make an opportunity attack because right. you can't see it. Yeah. And they hustle across and come to the door, and the door opens wide. And you can see this long, tall, thin shape that seems to be wearing some sort of dark wooden mask. And of course, in the light, you can see that the person is covered in tattoos. Outside, back at the room where you're standing, Elisa, and where um, and where now where uh, Jonathan is as well, you see someone scampering through the solarium as you've lost this person, and the person bursts out into the gardens, and you can see this person that's almost completely nude, wearing this with a loincloth or bandages wrapped around their waist, and wear this strange wooden mask of a half moon, smiling. And the figure is running across the gardens, directly below where the ba- where the banister is. Both of you roll initiative now. <clears throat> I 
Okay. So go ahead and put uh, both of your initiatives up there. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> I know you're on the ship. Not really so, what's going on. So, Harper, it's your turn. Make a hash work beside Harper. In 60 seconds, you will die from poison. You feel you you feel your you feel the, your life leaving you. You feel like you can see this like strange light on the edges of the periphery of your Arthur vision, you despite you being dark in here. What do you want to do? If I'm gonna die. I'm gonna go down, taking this guy with me, or at least as much as I can. I'm gonna attempt to kip up using coordination. Okay. Uh, your chance to kip up will be standard. Okay. So I have a 62. I rolled an 18. Nice. So I get up for one AP. That's right. You stand up. And then Perfect. I am going to maneuver towards the door. I maneuver for eight. Uh, like I said, I'm going to man maneuver. Oh, sorry, I was the uh, hustle. Hustle. Yeah. hustle. Okay. You hustle toward the door and you come to the door and you can see that the assassin is at the is about ten yards out, moving lightning quick, and is kind of bursting and burst out back into the garden, where you can see the light. <laughs> above you in the skies above the glass of the solarium mm -hmm. and you can see the figure out in the gardens yeah then i will hustle eight more yards towards it okay okay so, <laughs> that's all i can do. running as fast as you possibly can you kind of stop <laughs> short in you in your really dizzy yes yeah. uh at this point elisa and jonathan you can see harper and something looks terribly wrong elisa make a harsh mark beside your name up there This actually brings up some interesting questions that are totally mechanics related that I'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. Do I see anything that I can grab and possibly just throw at this person, or is this a distance that I really can't throw something? Well, this person is 10 yards out, and anything you would throw would be one plus perception bonus. Perception? Yeah. I'll go for it. Okay, do me a favor and mark off the hatch marks besides Terwin and the Assassin. It should only be for Harlan Harper. Mark off yours as well. Yeah, uh, yeah I will, uh, if there's something near me that I can chuck, a rock or... There's a huge heavy pot that's on the side of the banister. <laughs> can I communicate with her? Yeah, absolutely. I'll gesture towards the, uh, one of the, the, the desk lanterns. All right. I'm gonna attempt to throw that. Okay, so I'll move to it, grab it, it load, throw. Yeah, light, yeah, get light on it. Yeah. So I'll attempt to throw it at him. Okay. You've got a big lamp, and you, whew, you toss it out there. Uh, it, it he is, uh, I'd say, eight yards away. Sure. So what's your perception buttons? Seven. So right within. That's good. Cool. You throw out the lantern, of course, just snuffed out. It's a lamp. I just, and you toss it out there. But at least it should give a light as to where he headed for them right. to follow. That's right. Roll a hit. It's going to be a standard, or sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, a standard test. Uh, what am I rolling? Melee? Uh, simple ranged. ranged. So on my ranged, it's a 52. And I got a 29. Nice. Bap. You hit the person as it goes staggering. Long roll damage. What would damage be on it? Uh, you brawn bonus plus D6 for your die. Okay, so four plus four, eight. Nice. They are lightly wounded. They stagger around. Jonathan, what will you do? You can sit down now. I want to track Harper individually. What's going on now? Okay. <coughs> so is the lamp enough to get illumination on him for even a split second? Absolutely. In fact, there are enough. That it appears that the finale of the fireworks are happening at the same time. So the whole sky is alight with burning cinder and color. Uh, as you can hear the explosions all across the city as the whole garden opens up in this yellow, orange, purple, blue light from the fireworks above. This is sort of a uh, 
a difficult play, but I'm going to use my, uh, my memory techniques and my secret signs to try to see if I can make sense of his tattoos. Okay. In the light. Go ahead and spend uh, one action point for that. All right. I have a, uh, I have a plus 10 to something, but I don't remember what that uh, role chance. is. Secret signs? Yeah. Base chance. Yeah, folklore. Plus 10. Yeah, so go ahead and make a hard folklore. All right. Not because of the light. But because of the strangeness of the symbols. Alright. So this is not a bad one for me. So 65, 35. I have 65% chance to know what this is. Alright, pink is first. 58. I did succeed at my role. Nice! Well, you managed to, in your mind's eye, you managed to take a snapshot of what those are, at least. You won't be able to assess out precisely what their origins are yet. But in the moment, it's only like passing it so 10 many seconds. Things are happening. Yeah, that's right. So we'll give you a clue. I just hang out there in the window. Just... I can try to climb down this one. I ain't gonna catch up to them. You're just gonna hurt yourself. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay. The clue is the assassin's tattoos. Dun, dun, dun. I'm watching clues like a mofo today. You got uh, one action point left, Jonathan. What do you want to do? You're, you're outside on the band. You're outside on the uh, the balcony with um, with Elise at this point. Whew. You know what? Now that rock that she wanted to throw earlier, like that heavy, like her brass pot. fitting, I'll, that heavy mm -hmm. pot, I will throw the pot. <laughs> What's your perception bonus? It's because they're eight yards seven. out. Oh, nice! So, <laughs> so, 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 so he, he grabs the he grabs the heavy pot and it throws it head over you know both hands over his head. It's gonna be a challenging right. test. Right. Challenging simple range. Yeah. That's what I've always said. Pot kills. Just want you to know this isn't gonna work. <laughs> it's a thirty-three percent. You got this. I believe in you. Pink. Oh six. No. <laughs> Success. Oh my god. <laughs> Roll your brawn bonus plus one d six, and yeah, one d six chaos, one d six fury die, <laughs> and your brawn. All right, one d six, my brawn. Yeah. You can see it. Nine damage. <laughs> Whoa! I'll take it. Did you roll a six? No, I rolled a five. Okay, nine. <laughs> they are moderately wounded. Roll a d six chaos die. Come on, make this happen. Nice. Make this happen. Hurt that leg. Right ankle. Hurt that Break leg. Break their ankle. Yeah, hurt Arterial that leg. Spray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can use a fortune no. point to turn it into a six if you want. Do it. Do it. Yeah, let's definitely <laughs> use a fortune point <laughs> for a moderate injury. For a moderate yeah, injury. Yeah, injury. Okay. Thank you. Unless you roll a 99 on <coughs> under, right? Then it goes up. Alright. It's like a 7%. You want to you wanna choose, uh, you wanna choose sure. a card? Sure. Right. Could absolutely. It has happened in my hands. <laughs> what happens to the assassin? Alright. Broken leg. See. Broken leg. Yeah, I was really hoping for that, but still, this will help. It's a, uh, I've dislocated his shoulder. So he has uh, taken that right on the collarbone. They had a... Crossbow. What's that do? What's the effect? Until fully recuperated, they start their turn with one less AP. So Ooh! <laughs> oh! No more running! That will make him move slower. So yes, that that's right. Okay. Harper. <laughs> might have a chance to catch up. Go All Harper. right. This is good. <laughs> good job. Uh, so that brings... <laughs> the clerical team is on it. So that brings... Yeah, clerical, I mean like clerks. That's yes. right. Clerical as in cler clerical. Clerical. <laughs> so that brings us to Terowin. Are you Randall or not? Terowin is going to take off at full speed after the, um, no, after no, the assassin. Okay. So running? Uh, yeah, unless I catch up. But no, I'm just fuck it. I'm running. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay, you're quite a ways behind. Okay, you. What's your movement? Uh, six. Oh yeah, you'll close the distance. Uh, on your second. Yeah, you can hustle. Second. You can just charge forward. Okay, I'm gonna charge. I'm gonna. Oh! Oh! Terran charges forward, and then uh, uses his charge meter. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. Yeah, let's 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 do it. It's for fun. I'm gonna spear him. Yeah, just tack him okay. to the ground. So it's a takedown, and it's athletics this time, yeah. and it's gonna be easy for you. <laughs> okay, so seventy-one percent. <laughs> and 
and uh, 35 will succeed. <laughs> yeah. Nice! Uh, All right, let's see if they resist. Uh, so this test for them is 35. Mm. What do we got? 29! Uh. As you spear forward, trying to grab a hold of their waist, you fall face first and come back up on your hands and knees. They almost, they almost miss. And... That is all your action points. And then the assassin turns around, and all you see within the... The flashing of the light overhead is this crescent flash of a blade toward you uh, as they spend one action point to melee attack. Okay. 85, but it's a 70%... Sorry, 65% chance, but I think they're going to reroll for a misfortune point. So 65% chance... 22 critical hits. <laughs> and they are going to, of course, strike again. Yep. For a 55, the second AP, which is a hit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no. You didn't give me a chance to parry. You want to parry? Critical Do you have any action points? Oh, yeah. Critical success. Yeah, it's crit success. Yeah. Oh. So it's a second hit with strike again. And a critical hit on the third strike again. So it's one. Two, three, can I have a word six? Four. Ones. Ones. That's not really good. Uh, actually, it rolled really terribly. 12. 15 <laughs> damage. Okay. That could have been a lot worse. Uh, it was one, two, three, four. That could have been a lot worse. 15. I am moderately wounded. Okay. Roll 1d6. One one so roll 1d6 yeah. chaos down. Yeah. yeah. I had to do all that math for not wearing armor. Uh -huh. All right. One. Okay, no injury. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so I got to use the uh, get to test out the strike again. So the assassin is face to face with you at this point, and you realize, Terran, that this assassin is as tall as I am to you sitting down, terrifyingly tall and long limbed, and covered in these strange tattoos, and their skin is as pale as moonlight, and the mask upon their face is as half moon, where you can see half their face exposed and there's this terrifying looking strange eye that's bearing into your soul this deep blue eye and you could swear you could see the flash of a fang where half of its the oh person's mouth is exposed yeah. the strange elongated unusual bone structure of this person harper it's your turn uh, They're two yards away, and you as well see this. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Make a hatch right beside <laughs> Harper, please. All right. So it's been 15, now it's been 30 seconds, so you have some time. So you have very two minutes until you expire. Um, so I can't use any reactions, and I can't use any perilous stunts. That's right. Your, your fingers are numb, your elbows hurt, you get this pain in the back of your head. You've been hurt from the flash of a knife. I'm a little dizzy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so what I'm going to do, because uh, I'm not necessarily thinking this straight, I'm going to pick up a rock that I can find somewhere near me. Absolutely, you're in a garden, of course. I'm going to try to take aim, Okay. and I'm going to chuck this at that. Take aim is a special action. Exactly. Special action, not perilous stunt. Or oh, say, it's or a, so, so you can't game. use uh, perilous stunts or reactions. My apologies. So special action, so taking yep. it would still be okay. Yep. Uh, picking it up a rock cost me anything. One AP. So then, so take aim for one, and I'll yep. throw. You throw the rock. Uh, difficulty? Uh, it is. Ooh, it's yeah. gonna be hard.
versus right on top of Sterling. All right, 43. It's a 33, critical success. Whoa! <laughs> Roll 2d6 cast die and add your bronze bonus. All right, bronze bonus is five. Plus a six and a three, so nine. Uh, uh, plus... Is it explosion? Yeah, look at that. A four. Thirteen. And a thirteen plus five, eighteen. Whoa! Rock's the deadliest weapon in this game. Mm-hmm. Sure is. Grievously <laughs> wounded. <laughs> Roll three d six chaos dice. Uh, All right. Break. I got a one one. And a four. Oh. A four. And a four. <laughs> I wanted to say six. I was like, a four. The figure turns around and lashes toward Terran, and suddenly. Bap! A rock sends them spinning to the ground, almost falling as you see the mask almost broken off their face as the top of it's broken off. And you can see these long eye slits with these very high arching eyebrows that seem to twist up toward its forehead. And the person's hair is long and banned around like with two iron braids on either side. And they look terrified. It's scary. You both need to make a... A uh, standard uh, result test to withstand stress. Standard result. Sorry, uh, challenging for fear. My apologies. Challenging, challenging for fear. fear. Let's do 46. 46. 78. Failure, which triggers. 86. Lost heart. Oh, no. So we'll get to that in a moment. Did you both fail? Yes, yes. Even from your vantage, Elisa and Jonathan, this person looks very, very strange. And in the full light of the exploding fireworks, you both would need to make a routine result test to withstand stress. Okay. Resolve. 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 16, I'm fine. Damn, John's really rocks tonight. Yeah, he is. So, for purposes of Terrawin and Harper. Uh, you both suffer uh, six physical or sorry, six mental peril and six corruption. Yeah, nice. And I believe your drawback's been just been triggered. What's your drawback do? So I've lost heart. Uh, when suffering from stress, fear, or terror. Those afflicted with this disorder must reduce all damage they do by their fellowship bonus for either one, two, or three hours, depending on the severity of their madness. Uh, and then additionally, at any time, those affected by uh, Lost Heart may flip the result to succeed all skill tests to dodge and parry, which you can do with the bulk thing. Uh, and each time they do so, they take corruption. Right. So. so you can see, not only can you see the the blood washing from, but you see the color kind of leaving Terwin's face from the poison. He's, Sarah Harper, my apologies. You see a tear building up in his eye. And perhaps you're looking somewhere beyond the sky toward the Leviathan's eye, burning bright and blue, still hovering above the world, reminds you of, of her, the Baroness. Do your, I think. Your Lady of it, Durendal. Do I take that six as well? No. You, because you suffered stress, uh, suffer six. Oh, six again, too. So the six is mental peril and three corruption. Curvy is mine. Oh, yeah. nice. No, so what Harper thinks is that he's failed the Baroness. Like, uh, utterly and completely. And just, like, breaks him. So he's just... You can just blinked out eyes. He's just... Gone. You're no. mentally. But do I even know your poison? Crew, Batman, I'm behind you. I just said I yeah. could Yeah, he's, he's kind of weaving back and forth like he can't stand up straight. Like, he's clearly... Something's terribly amiss. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. If only Warren Rhodes were here, uh, he'd know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Warren So that was, uh, that was Jonathan's turn. Terwin. So I'm going to describe to you everything I want to. Okay. Um, so there's a lantern nearby me, and we're it's on the ground. down. Yeah, we're on the yeah. ground. And so what I want to do is I want to uh, pick up the lantern, and I wish to, uh, like, smash it in this monstrous face to get oil on it and light a match and throw it on there and uh, if I do it I got something I want to say but we got to see if I do it first. Okay, let's see it. So, uh, let's go ahead and make a routine simple melee test to start. 
Okay, routine simple melee test to start will be 60. And uh, 14 will succeed. Okay. The the lantern crashes over the top of it and roll brawn bonus plus uh, 1d6 chaos die. Or, sorry, fury die. Uh, 1 plus 1 uh, is 9. Okay. As, uh, Still grievously wounded. Okay, I will, uh, I will smash it into its face three times. Uh -huh. And then uh, I want to light the match and... Okay. Uh, make a make a routine coordination test. Okay, routine coordination. This one's harder. This is forty-seven. Something three and a thirteen will succeed. Oh! <laughs> and I roll two d ten plus two damage for fire. I will channel my dooming and I will say twice for poison, <laughs> thrice for a kiss. <laughs> oh and, uh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> the good guys. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. that will be uh, 17 Whoa. points of uh, damage from fire. The assassin. That's a really good play, by the way, on your viewing. That was fantastic, by the way. The uh, And it also harkens to the family uh, relationship. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and with that, the assassin is slain. You didn't want to subdue it with high fire? Subdue it with fire? Yeah, it's, exactly. Were exactly. I'm going for yes. <laughs> I'm like, going for subdue. Yeah. 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 That's what Terran would do. He'd go for subdue. Subdue a little damage with fire. Yeah. With fire. <laughs> that's some city hero shit right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I snuck up behind the guy like trash and explosives to knock him out. Or grenades. Explosions are obviously the best. And uh, Terran will like that's how you capture as this thing is burning on fire. Terran will. Mines on them. Right. Terran will completely hold still as he stands up and just kind of stares into the dis into the fire. And goes completely like catatonic. Okay, okay so we have two catatonic people down back, here now. Right. Back at the ship. <laughs> <laughs> mister, Mister. You hear the the messenger is returned. Okay. So where the, where how far did we away did we go? Did it make? Oh, I'm, I'm we sorry. Were, I'm sorry. You left port. My apologies. I'm sorry. Port. That's right. So never mind. You're downriver. That's yeah. absolutely right. I forgot. I'm like, hey, you're way down. You're all the way down the river. He's in the boat. <laughs> down the river. That's right. I made it all the way here in ten minutes. No. He's got a horse. <laughs> so as you're, as Elisa, you and Jonathan come out into the courtyard, and you can see that the, 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 the slain assassin is now softly kindling and burning from lamp oil as. Terrawin is standing over it, uh, breathing deeply and inhaling the smoke, and it smells horrendous. And then as you look toward the other way, Harper is literally staggering across the ground and able to hold himself up as he's leaning against a, a nearby kind of freestanding pillar, and he slips off and falling face first into the grass. Picks himself up. He looks like he's terribly drunk, but something doesn't look right. His eyes are dilated. All the, all the blood has left his face. He's just repeating, I've failed her. Over and over again. I'm gonna attempt to go check on him. No. You don't have to attempt to check him, but you can see him. Clearly, he's... I, I got nothing in heels, so <laughs> I'm attempting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would probably notice a giant gaping stab wound uh, that I've received. Oh, well, two stab wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, but like that doesn't that like stab wounds wouldn't really explain it. But you're not sure because like he's right. gonna have heal, but. He kind of just looks at you, like, absentmindedly, and just says, I failed her. Yeah. Like, my particular job, I've probably seen twins before, but I can't take that for granted, so. Yeah, I mean, you have story in alchemy? I don't. I've never mm. made it. <laughs> I might have mm. seen it. Do you have any anti venom with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to check uh, the, uh, I'm assuming the corpse is not on, because humans are not that flammable. So I'm going to check and see if they had anything on them. Well, there is oil covering them head to toe, and they are technically softly kindling. Yeah, I wasn't exactly, like, precise with it. Well, I'm going to use his cane to try to move around them and see if there okay. is anything on there. Well, you can see it. there was a belt facet around their waist that was affixed with these small vials. I'm gonna... Okay, from that, I think she could probably draw some um, I'm going to pull that belt off and see if any of the vials look different from another. Okay. 
you could have unlatched the belt and pulled it away out of the fire across the grass and suddenly people begin to nobody has really gathered around outside of the gardens yet but dirge the younger and sir and sir Genity's not here but dirge the sorry let me flip that there's the younger is not here but sir Genity copper comes outside like he comes out through the guards and quickly rushes up what the blazes he says do you know anything of healing or is there someone who does he da, da, da. quick sir he shakes his head no no none here there's no no barber surgeon no no doctor no physician she's gonna look through and see like guess which one might be an antidote because she would assume that they would carry an antidote. There are there are like there are two empty vials on okay. the belt. Okay. They're little pellets. And two full vials. Crap. Now you can drink it and find out. <laughs> I mean, if he's gonna die anyway. Harper ain't gonna argue with you. He's just gonna tell you that he failed her. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Both the two last vials look the same? Or do they look They different? look exactly the same. They are fixed differently in the belt. One was toward the front, one was toward the side. I'm going with the one that was towards the side. And I'm going to try to make Harper drink it, because screw it, let's see what happens. I mean, he'll comply. Okay. Uh, well, you won't spit it out, but I'm it's, sure if you, like, coax him a little bit. Then no, just yeah. drink this. As, okay. he, as he drinks it, you can feel... Oh, suddenly he starts thrashing in the ground and foaming at the mouth as you're now afflicted with a third dose, dose <laughs> and you're unable to use movement actions or perilous stunts or reactions. You can't move. You, Try the last one. His legs, hold, his legs you have to aren't. You pour it down his throat. He's foaming at the mouth. I'll try. Right. Do, you, uh, do you mind if I uh, attempt to see if we can squeeze these wounds dry before we? Pretty Just sure ease him towards the uh, the grave. Uh, you try what you want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you wish to do, John? I can. I have heal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't. I. It's the uh, it's the class ability that lets me. I don't. I can use my edu- my intelligence special skills as regular skills, so I can nice. try it. Yeah. Go ahead and make a hard heal test. All right. I believe in you, Jonathan. You've been rolling real well all night. You should yeah. have to flip it to fail. Yeah, we're yeah, saying exactly. case scenarios, I should roll a new character. This is funny. Exactly. This is a... Yeah, I don't, I don't have shit in here. A hard... I mean, I have three fate points. That's going to be 35. I don't either, but I, I can use special skills. 35. Okay. Pink first. Come on, dice. Critical success. Whoa! <laughs> oh! 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 The hero. Not only does Jonathan know how to administer it, he starts he starts sucking the poison out and spinning it out on the ground where the wound was, and he begins to take his he begins to take water or wine or and maybe nearby inside the dinner party as you fetch it quickly as he pours a decanter of wine down his throat. Forcing him to get sick. And your life <laughs> is saved Yay! by Jonathan Harper. <laughs> uh, I was 100% sure I was dead. Oh my gosh, I thought so too. Uh, I was like, oh no. I critically failed that roll, man. I was like, poison, <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Oh, no. I'm super dead. <laughs> well, I mean, Harper might appreciate Jonathan a little bit more once he comes to him. But the 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 fireworks, the final display comes to its finale, yeah. and the air smells of spent pyre shot and gunpowder. And now there is it's hard to see the moon and the stars because there's so much haze in the air lingering over Kale Tyrion. But people will begin to filter about. Bruce just gonna lay on the ground. Like he's spent. Yeah. <laughs> we'll assume that the night is going to pass at this point because a lot has kind of unfolded very, very quickly. The question is, where do you want to keep for the night? Do you want to stay? You're welcome to stay here all night if you wish. You'll be able to rest, but you'll be attending to things. We'll send a horse down river to retrieve the mat line. <laughs> to retrieve uh, the mat line because it's being dragged along the shoreline. It went out to sea. That's, that's right. So that's we right. can send somebody down the river to. Hey, bring it back. back. <laughs> We're good. Okay. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. So we'll assume 24 hours pass, or some about. We'll assume about six hours pass and nobody has slept. Obviously, with what's happened this evening. Yeah. As you all suffer from sleep deprivation for uh, seven mental peril. Fine. No, I'm good. I ignore one skill rank. You said seven? Yes. yes. Correct. Impervious. The uh, the next day comes, and the sunlight, when it comes to bear, it is brighten in your eyes. You're still out in the gardens trying to piece everything together. Uh, and you are brought in at this point, uh, Warren, uh, into the garden party, or what was remnants of the party. The party has, at this point, disbanded only uh, Lord Clayton Arcade II, Lady Gabriella Arcade, who has been uh, kept upstairs. And remember, she drank quite a bit uh, this evening. Sir Genity Copper, Dirge the Younger, and the household servants and guards remain, including all of you at this point, and the bright daylight of the following day after the party. Harper's melancholy is definitely, like, kicking it. You have survivor's guilt. That, and, like, he honestly does think that he's like, we've completely failed. Like, we've utterly and completely failed. <laughs> you all meet to speak privately just outside the solarium. The uh, At this point, we'll assume Clayton R.K. and the Lord Lord Clayton R.K., his wife, Sir Genity, and um, Durge the Younger are attending to other things as they're trying to clean up and put together a few things. You imagine at some point or another that the city watch will show up as well later, early today. But that gives you time to investigate and do what you wish to do to speak privately among one another about what has unfolded. Can we assume that they just fill me in? Sure. Off camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you make of that, Warren? <laughs> well, I reckon we, uh, we succeeded. What? I ain't dead. Except for Rosalia. Yeah. yeah. We... Our original mission was to keep Rosalia alive. Right. I mean, she was supposed to make it here, but I assume they wanted her back. Actually, they never specified if you... I'm pretty sure the contract did. Said deliver her here to get a paper signed, so we didn't get the paper signed. This paper basically says that we're done. (laughs) So technically by semantics, I guess we met the requirements. Yeah. Probably not the spirit, but the requirements. No, I'm pretty upset. You that seem a bit off. Both of you. What happened last night? I mean, I, I saw obviously you fighting. I think. We fought a monster. A monster. Yeah. We saw it. It was quite strange. Yes. I don't mean monsters and like you know, Jabberwockies and whatnot, but. Well, I, I mean, I mean, like you know, a monster, like uh, one of those giants. Yeah, were we able to look at the body at any better with any better light? It looks very, very odd. Like, I've seen daylight. folk before and stuff like that. It's not a folk, is it? It's not one of the folk. Not, not at all. It's the person is it is a person. Uh, is probably about seven and a half feet tall. Jesus. Uh, and the wooden mask was. Crude, not crudely fashioned, but strangely fashioned with odd angles and shapes. And the face has been burnt completely. But what is most notable about this person, or resembles a person, is that their ears are pointed. Have I ever, have I ever, ever seen any picture like this in any book I've read? Or? The Siabra? Absolutely, you have. Okay. So it sounds like a folk tale almost. Mm-hmm. What? How co- yeah, how common knowledge yeah. is it? Uh, Warren, probably. Uh, I reckon I've seen one of these in these, these old books. Uh, sea Auburn's, what they're called. The bo- they're the kind book. of a insular people. I guess you put it that way. What they don't consort with others, mostly. Mm-hmm. They're their own type. What concern would they have had with the barrister? That's a good question. Uh, that, that, that ain't a person. 
Right. That's a thing. Well, I mean, it's not a man, strictly speaking, but it kind of is. How badly burned were the tattoos? Burnt to a crisp. But you've got a very clear go vision in your mind of them. To them. my memory. That's right. I'll start relating what they are and what they mean to the uh, the others. It's like they seem to almost tell a tale of uh, of this person's life uh, from birth to the point where they had begun marking themselves by the number of deaths they had dealt by their hand. This there was already eight marks upon the, within the tattoos. This is any of them fresh? Good. They're all burnt to crisp. Okay, and you can't see anything. This is simply from Jonathan's memory. You fell from the trellis, correct? When you pursued this thing? Well, yeah. Right. He says so embarrassedly. Now, I will take a look at the uh, at the bottom of the trellis to see if the bottom rooms have, like, trample marks where the vines have been beaten down to see if this thing climbed in from outside. Oh, yes. All right. I'm going to head towards the solarium. I'll point that out there. to the others, like... This is the uh, method of ingress. He climbed through this window. Ah. He also went out that window. So he was not a uh, he was not a guest. Yeah, I could have told you he went out the window, but I didn't know the coming in part. That's useful. Oh, a seven foot tall creature would have stood out a bit. How else would he gotten in? Front doors closed. Couldn't have come through the chimney. No <laughs> fire gun. So it had to be. Well, she could have been collateral damage, I suppose, but not by the attacks. It seems deliberate. Definitely deliberate. Did were the they, tattoos blue? No, they were not. Okay. Did they leave anything behind when when you were in the uh, solarium area? Have you checked the? No. Maybe we look there. Alright. I don't know. They had it as a base. A, a spot to come back to. I mean, they seem to gun for that. Yeah? Something yeah. about this that uh, strikes pretty clear. In the whole situation. Even taking it at face value, there's something about it that strikes an unusual. Think about this. The lady was killed in a uh, struggle. Several imprecise, like, stabs. Yeah. Two struggles, one that actually took the commander into the hall. However, we know now, as our, uh, our very fortunate friend can say, that it bore poison on it. Yes. If the intent was simply to assassinate the attendees in the drawing room, why wouldn't it just... Poison? use a poison dart and a blowgun through the window, why would it have been so gruesome and personal? Something went really wrong. What did it, uh, what did it use on me? Like, oh, what, what was it holding that? Great question. A very strange knife. A very strange one, in fact makes of which you've never seen before. That's literally all you say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just to clarify. I was like, yeah, it's I a, thought it's you were pulling a, thought you're a picture. Yeah. No. Uh, it, is a, it is a weapon you, which you've never seen a makes of before. I'll pick it up and I'll hand it to Jonathan and be like, did you, do you think that one of these was either one of them weapons? It's sort of a jagged, like unusually shaped blade? Uh, it is indeed, yes. It is jagged, almost like a lightning bolt. I'll show that to... Uh, so it's not any sort of martial Earth weapon that we'd be able to identify it? So, okay. the commander was killed with a precise, thin yeah. blade. Yes. Her wounds are consistent with a, let's say, a more spectacular weapon. Oh, what, like, like this? this. Like, yeah. pull, 
pull my shirt Looking down. Looking at the wound. It doesn't yeah. look. The wound's in me as well. <laughs> Clearly, as you're, where you're out on the edge of the Solarium, where you went in, at least, uh, this assassin dropped a few things inside. As you could step into this large chamber full of four dozen mannequins dressed in all manner of clothing. And as you're kind of looking around, you can see that they had clearly constructed some kind of makeshift traps. Uh, ropes tied between the mannequins. Uh, one of the uh, heavy um, ropes that are used to to lower or lift these heavy curtains near these mirrors uh, was also moved around. There's a heavy gray shift uh, that, or sorry, a light gray shift in one of the gorgers, one's face and one's body uh, that is lying on the ground kind of with some blood spattered across it. Uh, but you also find that there's this long, thin stiletto, or sorry, a uh, misery cord rather, a misery cord lying on the ground, and also a small satchel that was clearly dropped from the belt. Can I open the satchel and look in it? There's a crumpled piece of paper inside of it. Can I read or attempt to? Um, language. Yeah, well, it's it's clearly written in all, okay. and it is a charcoal drawing of a woman that is clearly Rosalia Mansfield, and not a crude drawing at all, a very well done drawing. Um, the parchment, however, is smudged and covered in some blood, and there are apparently instructions to kill Rosalia Mansfield upon it. And it indicates the portrait, this portrait of her, and it appears to be some sort of contract of sorts. The greed price is a hundred gold crowns. And at the bottom of the note, there is a seal that you don't readily recognize as a cartouche. And the initials inside the cartouche are BL. Do I know of anyone who would rank high enough somewhere near this area that has family or whatever that's uh, last name Elf? Where are you from? Where am I from? Romania. Where were you born? Uh, Calterian. That's right. Not here. No. None that immediately strikes her. Is it BL? Yeah, so she's going to step back out and show it to me. Does anyone have any idea? Bruno Lane. Bruno? Who's that? He was part of that group. That mysterious group in Drindle. The merchants? Yep. Yeah. Well, that makes sense to them. Mysterious group of merchants. I'm in uh, a bit of trouble remembering. Bit of a cabal. Yeah. Can't uh, quite remember what their name was, but I'm sure she does. Yeah, <laughs> she starts looking through her notes again. You wrote it down, it's the guiding hand. Yeah, I, there it is, I just found it. I'm a guiding hand. Um, yes, they were the, the merchants group that was to be possibly fighting against the Baroness form. <laughs> the wolves are quite loud today. Mm, they're crying for the Baroness and Rosalia. Rosalia. Sure. And Ambien's Whoever. Cry. I'm and really confused right now, alright? I've been drugged. <laughs> and the, uh, Gelman and Zox, the foundry owners, are the other people that... Uh, Wolfgang owes them a lot of money, too. Yes. Uh, the, the proctor, um, he told us about you remember. The one that decided to read our notes and then have a meeting with Rosalia, who once again has obviously been withholding. Now, I found another name. It happened to be on a message she received from a messenger. Uh, Templeton Murdoch. Does that strike any? The ring any chords? Yeah. And that might be our next concern. If he sent a letter to her during said party, she stepped away and then died. 
The name Templeton Murdoch strikes a chord with you, um, Jonathan. You're pretty sure he's a Malaronite. You know that follows. Especially if the rest of these things are true. Certain uh, hobbies and interests were, uh, let's say, unveiled. Let's say that. In fact, you seem to recall that Templeton Murdoch and Josephine uh, were classmates, for back, lack of a better term, along with you. You're right. <laughs> Throw that name into the mix. Oh, your good friend. Great. I'm not sure I have any friends here. Unfortunately. I think with everything you're lending to us, we are becoming fast friends. <laughs> not quite fast enough when you were running through that solarium, though. I'm sorry, I just... I'm not reading the room properly. But no, I appreciate your words. That is funny. A little funny. No, it's funny. I mean, it's not ha ha funny. It's, it's a you know, <laughs> I really funny. It's a slight smile funny. Yeah, I'll work on it. No, you, I'll, I'll give I'll give it some I'll give it extra effort. I promise. I'm I'm finding myself again. There's something very important I must tell all of you, and I mentioned it at least two. Uh, Tarwin and Lisa, but before you passed, I, s- I had my suspicions about the Lady Mansfield. I did not uh, entirely, uh, entirely trust her. I asked him while he was in his, uh, in his death throes to communicate to me as to whether he, she was responsible for his death, and he indicated in fact that she was. How so? How so was he uh, responsible? Was she responsible for his death, or how was the communication taking place? Communication taking place. Well, his mouth was full of blood, so I asked him to squeeze my hand a number of times, indicating if she was responsible. He clearly did so. And then he expired. I think he could have been lying. I don't know why. Why did he get that man? What reason does a dying, like she said, what reason does a dying man have to lie? A legacy. Yes, but if Jonathan had died going after whatever was in there, like say Rosalia possibly attacked me, no legacy for that. Just speculating. Don't know. Mm, maybe he misunderstood intent. I, I don't know. Well, I didn't hear your words. You spoke to him. <coughs> maybe, maybe he thought you meant was she also attacked. I, d- I don't know. Or perhaps he took the question to be one of metaphor, <laughs> and that her responsibility was indirect rather than direct. Well, we'll never know, will we? And that her actions and perhaps uh, cavalier attitudes or foolish decisions led to her. Uh, but it is clear it's not so much that he was uh, that she was very very much stabbed as they both were, well, in the literal sense. Whether she was at fault or not, matters not at this point too much because she's gone. I, I would tend to disagree with you there. I think it matters a great deal. I think it determines what all of the next plays are. If she was involved in some sort of dealings that were outside the bounds of the contracts that you signed back in the Red She was. Period. Are we, are we questioning that? Does anyone believe that she actually... She obviously has withheld things from us. She withheld things from us repeatedly. And when that messenger came in, considering she knew the stance of what we were doing at that party, she should have spoken to one of us, but she didn't. She ran off and died. How carelessly uh, selfish of her. (laughs) But then again, I have often attended to my upstairs quarters without being, you know, beset upon by a what two meter troll crawling through the window so that certainly is a uh, is a wrinkle in all this this is not her quarters and she knew there was an assassin about going after the baron 
Yeah, she disappears on her own. I'm not certain that the purpose of the room is the greater overall purpose here. Either way. So what are you getting at? I don't know. I I have a guess, and my guesses have not exactly been, let's say, perfect for now, but it's like predicting the weather. All you can do is take what you see as the high probability play. I could be completely wrong. But these these notes that Elisa managed to, to retrieve from the fire pit before they were turned to ash mention a specific book which for a lack of terms is let us be plain about it. It is a book of incantations. It is a book of of mystical stuff. There's a great chance that Laura and I would want to have. Laura would want to prevent someone else from having. Well, I think it's kind of plain in my mind. I think she was led with false information to believe that the Baron would be the target when she was the target all along. Here's the strange knife. So that Ooh, way man. we would focus our attentions to keeping him alive when he was never in danger to begin with. And yeah, I think she was the target, and if you think the Lord and I was behind it, I think it was that man in Hastings. Yeah. You know, now that you say that, when did she come about that information? She came well, about it in Hastings, right? I believe so. She knew about it before we even got there. She, well, she never told us exactly when she came of the information. We kept asking, remember? When we were on the shore before we got to even the boat going to the water, she told us. Yeah, she said Unless she. Unless it was you or your wife that gave her information, which I doubt. Yeah, yeah. No, no, she not told information us. Information I had to give. She so. told us that it was in Hastings, right? Right. So well. if that man back there was a info broker, my guess is that this, my guess, Bruno, paid him to give her misinformation, then paid an assassin to kill her, to keep these, either to get this book of incantations or a greater plot of keeping the Baroness from being able to solidify her separation. That's my conclusion. We failed on all fronts. Completely bamboozled. Well, I think you said it. It's interesting. You just called out for elf, elf and Nobody comes, except for me. That doesn't seem right. I know why you didn't. It's because I told you to, you know, go with the others. And I couldn't hear you. (laughs) 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 My concern is certainly not with our immediate company, but (laughs) why not a member of the house? Detail or just party party members? Yeah, no, no. Unusual. You see, well, something I was thinking of as I was running through that scenario is, well, isn't this the perfect uh, thing to get us to leave the Baron alone? And so I was for sure that as soon as I was done taking, we was done taking care of this threat, we'd come and find the Baron murdered. Well, he's just fine. That's what I assumed too. That's why I tried to get into the room, but there wasn't. He was never a target. Never once. And... I believe they was in on it because help, help, and not a single soul comes up. You know, I know it's different in all sorts of societies, but when someone says help, anyone in my society is inclined to look in. It doesn't matter who you are, what social class, what uh, you know, man, woman, nothing. You expected to look in. Someone needs help, you help them. Makes sense to me. The easiest thing for a pacifist to do is nothing. It's probably what he was led to do. Convinced to do nothing. Uh, right. Just let it play right, out. Right. I mean, you know, I can see the Baron, you know, you know, sitting by on this, but no one. Someone should have. Not a single soul. That's so what do, you, what do you make of that then? You think the Baron told everyone not to help us out? I don't know, but you put that thought in my mind and now I'm I'm thinking it. I'm not certain if that's what they anticipated would happen, 
but it seems clear to me that they anticipated something would happen. Oh, I have no doubt of that. We weren't the only ones that had some kind of information about this place. Look at how many people were, were doing wheelings and dealings and strange things down on the floor. We had what, that Armani man stealing random keys from the man at arms at a party. We had. I agree. We had the 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 dancer and the god with their father Hefner or whatever uh, coming in and talking about doing certain things during the fireworks, which obviously Rosalia was taking care of before the fireworks. So I wonder what that entire thing was about. I don't think they heard me, so I don't think it was a pretense. Or they saw me, or knew that I heard them, I should say. So. Well, well I certainly understand uh, Harper's trending towards uh, cynicism in this matter. I don't think we have any concrete proof that, we, that it was, in fact, a complete failure. I am not 100% certain that the Baron was not also a target. And I am not certain that our actions did not save his life. Considering all... Uh, Go. Your actions, I should say. You can hear the slinking of mail kind of rhythmically, kind of swishing back and forth as you see no. about four city watchmen who are dressed head to toe in mail, accompanied by Dirge the Younger, a name that is clearly a misnomer, a man of some 70 years wearing some blue royal garb and a ceremonial sword now at his waist. You have not seen the Baron nor the Bear, sorry, the Lord nor the Lady of the House Arcay. Uh, Surgeon into copper, neither. However, Dirge the Younger enters the gardens. He's not this, quite to, in, within earshot, though. Not yet, no. He's almost there. I'm gonna walk up and greet him, giving them a little extra time to talk if they want it. Sure. Well, if we don't know if he's implicated or not, we best not give too much information. No. There's a handshake between Terrellin and Dirge the Younger at this point. Our conversation ends now. Mm-hmm. Pick it up later. What the devilish creature is this? Dirge says he looks over the charred body. Warren says it's a... Was this the killer of Ms. Mansfield? I head that direction. Mm-hmm. What direction? Towards Terwin. No, he's approached. He and the city guard have approached at this point. Oh, they're, they're all the down there. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Brought okay. with. Okay. Yeah. We assume. Well, one is says it's a... Siabra. C- yeah. Hmm. Dirge says nothing after that. Have you seen their Is like? No. Not, not here. Not this far east. He remarks it with his walking cane and prods at it. The mask, he inquires. Um, s- somewhere over there. He walks over and picks it up. Hmm. The city guard are kind of looking at the body in bewilderment. I mean, it does look very alien. Looks very strange. This wet skin is still there that hasn't been charred and burned. It's as pale, as white, pale as a sheet. Did we have a conversation with him overnight above board? No, not at this point. We'll assume that you haven't, you've only spoken among one another and trying to kind of gather, basically pulling the pieces together of what's happened overnight. You've spoken with nobody save yourselves. You've not spoken to Dirge, nor Genity, nor the Baron. We'll all assume right. you all have kind of been trying to piece things together as you're ought to do uh, for long conversations. Okay. Well. Uh, frown for a moment before silencing myself and letting them go. How does the Baron fare? The Baron is fine. The Baron is alive. That's the most important part. We, haha, <laughs> last evening, after speaking with the city guard, we discovered the young one, Althea, the young woman who recently joined. She is the daughter of Hefner. And something terrible was planned, he says. Yeah? Delilah was in on it. Did it happen to Hugh and Cry? <laughs> We've not found Hefner yet. Mm. But Delilah, yes, she has been imprisoned as has Althea. I, 
You don't, you don't mind if uh, we find out what they had planned? Is that all right? And so, uh, uh, in, in case you, you didn't know, I'll finally show the badge. Dufresne. Yeah. I knew that. Your man, Banneker, told me. You can do your inquisiting, but after us. Sure. The Baron would like to have a very close conversation with the two of them. Sure. I, I didn't know if he was done already, so you, you do you do take care of it, and we would be appreciative if you'd let us in on it. And if they could speak after said close conversation, it would be most welcome. In due time, he says. Is there anything we can do to help? The Baron is alive. For now, that is enough, but this business, as he points toward this devilish thing from the West, and the fate of Miss Mansfield, and how the Baron is upset, as is Lady R.K. They were sponsors of her uh, studies. Rosalia was uh, beloved by the family. I didn't know her very long, but I'm pretty upset myself. Well, I imagine we'll have to take her back to Durindle. Mm. Will the Baron want to accompany us? Maybe sign the treaty there? He looks at you. I think that was the whole damn point of this thing, right? Yeah. I don't the, think there's going to be any treaty. There's a matter of Dirge says. Decorum. <laughs> I mean... She's beloved. Wouldn't he want to see her put to rest? Especially since she was murdered in his own house? Master Harper. Let's pass over this topic for now. Sure. She's been dead for less than six hours, damn it. Right. Could I... And all we can talk about is this fucker as I kick him. Could I ask, did you know Cometa Tanenfield was here? No. Truthfully... We weren't led to know this until later on. Our understanding was that um, Mr. Murdoch, a fellow here from Kael Tyrion, mm -hmm. was to meet with uh, Ms. Mansfield today. Mr. Murdoch. Some business. Colonel Tannerfelder and the others arrived late last evening. I don't know the details, but I suspect they were probably part of the uh, deployment from Durindal. My understanding, as it has been explained to me uh, by your man, Wolfgang, that uh, you were a contingent sent to ensure Rosalia's safety, knowing, the, uh, knowing how precious her life was to ensure that uh, this meeting in the mines was to happen to seal the deal between Lord R.K. and the Baroness. You said Murdoch. Do you know anything of this Murdoch? Some of Lord I... Uh, and you God folk. Do you know of anything of this Murdoch? The City Watch kind of turns one another and they defer to Dirge the Younger. One shrugs their shoulders and one says no, the other one says nothing. These are my men. Any things, any questions you have for them, you can pose to me. Well, understandably, but I assume that it's possible they could put things you haven't. Well, I am the city, I am the captain of the city guard. Everything that happens within the walls of the upper city is under my jurisdiction. He says, forgive me, I know you have been here at some time, Ms. Marius. Yes. Thank you, your father. He's a good man. Thank you, your brother, too. <laughs> they are not here, though. No. A good woman has died today. So the question is, what will the Dufresne do about it? Well, the more we can find out. The better armed with knowledge we are, the better we can, uh, you know. Anything you need from us 
is at your disposal. I cannot express the, uh, the love that Ms. Mansfield had felt with the RK. It was pretty evident that she had a lot of respect. It was very important to her that nothing happened. A very guarded woman, but for good reason. Oh yeah? She was a spy master for the Baroness. She and... She and Julian, that is. Julian Coventry, the head of the Salt Peterman. Trying to think if I know that name. No. Yeah. Doesn't strike a chord at all. Now, I know about quite a few Coventries. And that name doesn't strike me familiar at all. He's never far from the Baroness's orbit, that's for sure. She gave him the look, eh? I'm not sure. Don't take your meaning. Oh. Dirge says. Never mind. Uh, mm. Apparently she has a... Well, well I saw her first hand. She's got quite the uh, um, way of inspiring people. people quite charismatic. Yeah. People want to render love her. Deservedly so. She has opened her heart and her walls to those affected by the war. She has taken many folk in, including Grahlstatters. Yes. Yeah. She, she'd be a beacon for everyone in this damnable country to turn toward. People think she is a... Uh, People think her vices control her, but I know an intelligent woman, an intelligent person when I see them. And the Baroness is that. She only brings those of a like mind into her circle. While we're speaking of the events of last night. Yes. Did you ever find out why Armani took your keys? Money is a drunk bastard. As to what his goals were, we'll never know. He's absconded away in the night. Does he have any sort of studio? He was a petty thief. An art thief. So he wasn't even an artist himself? <laughs> Just stole things and sold it off as his own? He talks a big talk. In my understanding, at least. I suspect he was trying to get into uh, Lord R.K.'s private s study. He corrects himself where he says man cave. Study. <laughs> but he is absconded away in the night. I'm certain we'll never see him here again. But if he does return, he'll be hung by the neck. <laughs> Quite the punishment. He's a thief. Well, I didn't know he deserved that. no better. Okay. Oh. We run a very tight ship here in Kale Tyrion. Very few crimes to be had. We attract the best and brightest across all of Aglador and the Bovane Girdle. Well. Hmm. Do you have any further questions for us? No. You saw the body, yes? Master Jonathan? I'm, I'm sorry, what? You saw the, the body of Ms. Mansfield. You were... All two first times. Did you witness the events that transpired in the hallway with Commander Tenenfelder? Did you see the... Dracus? Only the, uh... Only the curtain call, I'm afraid. Yes. Hmm. Well, 
His mouth and throat were filled with blood. He was alive, but unable to do much living. Were we only able to subdue this, the assassin and, and inquisit them appropriately? This infernal thing. They pretend to speak our tongue, but it is grotesque. They so they deserve worse than to be burned, but whatever reason, whatever story this thing had is now gone. Yeah, it's something that you know, in hindsight, I, I regret, but I mean, surely you can understand what it's like to be in the moment, and if if it, maybe you've ever been in out, uh, you know, uh, out armed and uh, desperate. I was raised to be a man of discipline, Mister Forrester. Even in the thick of it. So no, I cannot understand. Well, us war bastards were different. Sometimes we had to fight with our teeth. He nods. That thing, it's an assassin. It didn't have any care. It just did a job. It's obvious. Oh. No offense it, it didn't you. know nothing more than the target. No offense to you, Dutch, but I personally would like to take a rest. Someone other than here at this moment. One point of clarification. No Siabra would be a higher knife. Not them. Well, if this thing, these things don't come that far, you said east? You know, then why else would it be here? I reckon there's always exceptions to the rule. Why wouldn't it? Not in the case of Siabra. It's still wearing, it was still wearing its mask. I mean, you know more than I do. Yeah, uh, what's that mean? A Siabra that are exiled, they ritualistically break their mask to show their face. Okay, so this one was still in an exile. Oh wait, was it broken? Half the face was, of course, you remember oh. half the face was revealed when you saw the mask. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, if it's in exile, then, you know, it can, it's gonna do what it wants, right? Or what it has to, to survive. I mean, it can't necessarily go and join, you know, like, a city or a farmstead. The merchant be, be welcomed. Yeah. And you seem to think that the Siagra think like people. But make no mistake, they are not people. They are human like you and I. Well, then what do they do in the exile? That's a good question, Dufresne. All right. I can see I'm getting under your skin. So I'll leave you to it. And uh, we'll be back if we have any questions. Does that sound good? You the leave the city as you need. All right. I apologize for getting under your skin. You're fine. Okay. We have an understanding then. We do. <laughs> so with that, we will wrap up for the evening. Before he leaves, actually, oh. if we could. Yes, absolutely, sure. No, it won't take long. As he turns to walk away, I'm like, I'll have, I have final words, if I might. That's Jonathan. Of course. I present to you the Madeline. <laughs> this is her story. With we'll that, we will close up for the night. Yeah. One hundred reward points. Yeah. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. We what are you talking about? We got corruption. Right. Oh, yeah. Corruption. Yeah. Wheel of corruption. Yeah. Wheel, Wheel of corruption. corruption. Yeah. So. Consistent and do things that he shouldn't know. Who? Dirge. Uh, like he knew things that he shouldn't have known yet. So just r- I wanted to say that before we wrap up because that means that I'm, I'm distrustful. <laughs> That's okay. I already have a, the next thing I want to follow up on. So we will roll for the wheel of corruption. 
because we've got uh, anybody have corruption around the table tonight? Yeah. Hey. Six, six, three, six. I'm uncorrupted. Zero. So just go ahead and give me six. Oh, oh, man. Right. You must be feeling terrible. I mean, it's like you. Yeah. I didn't do much. <laughs> What we have tonight? What we have tonight? What we have tonight? What is it? Five, four. Chaos. 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 Like the uh, oh like the weird yes. Song that wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're about to get a paper. Oh, look at that. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. See you all next week. Bye. 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 Bye.